All right, uh, welcome to Rebel Headquarters. Uh, we've got uh, two great guests for you guys. Adrian Bell is gonna join us uh, in a little bit. She's fighting down in Texas against one of the worst Republicans in the country. So uh, I want you guys to meet as many of the candidates as you can. We're gonna talk to a lot of different progressive candidates, including uh, next week, uh, Ben Jealous is gonna be on. He's running for governor of Maryland uh, and, and he's a wonderful uh, progressive as well. Former head of the NAACP, one of big of Bernie Sanders. Supporters, there is. Okay, now uh, in studio, Paula Jean Swearingen running against uh, Joe Manchin, um, one of the most conservative Democrats uh, there is in, in the Senate. Paula Jean, great to have you on the Young Turks and Rebel Headquarters. How you doing? Great, great. Um, so uh, I had Joe Manchin on the show mm -hmm. and I asked him who his top corporate donors were. Right. Um, number one, he says he doesn't know. Uh, do you believe him? Um, no, I don't believe him, but I know the coal industry and Marlin Pharmaceutical. Yeah, so he, he says that he's just taking money from those folks because uh, he needs to run his campaigns and he's gonna look out for the coal workers. Uh, do you believe him on that? There's a clear difference between being a friend of the coal industry and being a friend of a coal miner. And he doesn't need four, five billion dollars to run a campaign, that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, my campaign, I marched in May last year, got over $150,000 in small, small donations, $14.25, and I'm still going, so you can do it. Yeah. He, don't, he don't need that kind of money. He's financially invested in our demise. Okay, so uh, we, we can get that number up, $14, and we can get that. I hear that you can get to up to $27 right. as an average. So I, I, right away, I wanna give you guys links to Paula Jean's uh, website and, and everything else. And these links are always in the description box below if you're watching this, paulajean2018.com. And you see justdemocrats.com slash paula2018 to donate. Volunteers are the most important thing. So if you're in West Virginia, get out there and fight. Um, and Thank so, you know, Manchin usually says of his opponents, they don't understand coal miners, but you come from a family of coal miners. And so what did you learn from that experience? Most of my family worked in the coal industry and it's been boom and bust. And I've buried most of my family to the coal industry. The market for coal right now is down. It's not recovering, um, it's not projected to cover, recover. And through that boom and bust, people are seeing again in this generation that they're going you know, people are going to go hungry, and they have in the coal fields. But what I've seen throughout West Virginia is, like in Weirton, in the eastern panhandle and the other panhandle in West Virginia, is people are dealing with fracking, and they're dealing with the pipelines coming through. Most of those jobs are outsourced. My vision for West Virginia is to create an investment bank. You've seen trillions of dollars go out of, out of West Virginia for coal. I want to put that money back into West Virginia. Um, we can see an economic turnaround um, if we legalize cam cannabis within six to eight months. We can have agriculture. We can grow hemp on mountaintop removal sites. Um, we can have solar and wind. I think that we can advance in West Virginia with renewables, and we can also manufacture those in West Virginia. There's a lot we can do. We don't have to kill each other for jobs. Um, Joe Manchin's vision, he keeps on promising that he's gonna serve his corporate donors. And the people in West Virginia are tired. And through my travels and my campaign, I found out we're not only um, in the coal fields, but all over West Virginia. And we're gonna invest in ourselves. We're tired of Joe Manchin, we're tired of Shelley Moore Capito, we're tired of Jim Justice, we're tired of all the corporate polluters in West Virginia. We have set the platform across the nation for, gen you know, for cultural genocide. Um, we're one of the poorest and sickest states in the nation, and we've had enough, and we're fighting back. And don't go for Jim Justice, go for Justice Democrats. That's right, that's right, <laughs> clear difference. And, and you're one of the three Just Democrat uh, Senate candidates, so right. very, very important position. I, I never heard that idea before, that's really interesting. To plant marijuana on top of the mountaintops, uh, that would be a hell of a sight. <laughs> well, you know, they're not fit for a rattlesnake, but that hemp cleanses the soil. So I don't think that we can have essential oils with hemp, but we can create plastic and we start. We can do something with those sites. Um, there's over 200 mountains have been blown up in West Virginia, so we can at least do something with them because they're not vile. The, the, the use for the land is, um, there's nothing there for us. And so with hemp, um, it's been proven that we can do that with mountaintop yeah. removal sites. You know, hemp, marijuana, etc. Look, some people think it's a small little issue. Some people think, oh, it's for the young. They just want to smoke uh, pot and stuff. No, number one, uh, there's in West Virginia, there's the pill mills, right? 
and they're pushing those legalized drugs that are the opioids, etc., that are killing people in West Virginia. Marijuana has never killed anybody. And on top of that, there's the idea of social justice, which is we got maybe a million people in the country we can free if we stop imprisoning them for nonviolent offenses like marijuana, let alone all the things that you mentioned on top. I feel like on that alone, you could set West Virginia free. But it feels like the older politicians think, oh, no, no, that's just for kids, and we're not going to do any of that. We're dealing with one of the largest addiction epidemics in, West, in, in the nation. There's a small town called Kermit, West Virginia. Um, it was proven, I think, 60, 60, 60, 66. <laughs> I'm nervous, <laughs> I'm on the show. Um, 60, 60 Minutes done a, a segment, and, it pro- and there's um, 983 people in that community. And they shipped in five million pills to one pharmacy in that community. Um, it's been a trickle down effect with the poverty. It's been a trickle down effect with the lack lack of educational opportunities. Um, it's all come into play in West Virginia, and we need long term solutions to fight the addiction epidemic. And we don't have that either. We hear the war on drugs, but we hear our incumbents um, saying they're going to come come up with solutions, but they're um, treating one addiction with the other with lexaboxin, and we're not seeing any long-term treatment programs. So I'm hoping um, through my path through my candidacy too, I've traveled all over West Virginia, and I've talked to leaders that are looking for long-term solutions. We need more beds. We need more um, money going into long-term programs, as well as getting rid of the pill mills. And that means getting Big Pharma out of bed with Joe Manchin, Shelley Moore Capito, Evan Jenkins, and Jim Justice as well. Yeah, it, those opioids are the actual gateway drugs. And, and West Virginia probably feels it more than any state in the country. So, you know, the politicians say they're going to fight for you, uh, but they take private money, they take giant corporate money, and nine out of 10 times they wind up fighting for those guys. So, how can West Virginians tr- trust you to fight for them? Because I'm one of them. I think it's time to build a, a, a country um, like we are with the candidates, with Justice Democrats and brand new Congress, putting ordinary people in the position to make decisions for ordinary people. The working class needs working class representation. And I think that's what miss, is missing because big corporations have a lot of influence in elections. And when I put my foot on the, my desk in Congress, I'll serve nobody but the people of West Virginia and the people of this nation. So I asked Manchin about his corporate PACs, so I'm going to do likewise here, I want to be fair. Uh, who are your top corporate PACs? I don't have no corporate PACs. <laughs> I have nothing but small donations, $14.25. Yeah, look, to me, I think that's gigantic because can you trust the person running? Well, who's financing them, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's a big part of it. If you finance them at $14.25, there's a good chance they're going to work for you. That's why public financing and then private financing makes sense, but we're not there yet. So that's one of the thesis of just Democrats is no, we're not going to take the corporate PAC money so you can trust us to fight for you or just us. Um, so how about other priorities? So you're against the corruption, you mentioned the, the issues that affect West Virginia. Uh, what are the other big policy issues that you're going to fight for? I think West Virginia's nation deserves health care, and I think that we deserve educational opportunities. Um, West Virginia, again, is one of the poorest and sick, sickest in the nation. And in order to create an infrastructure in West Virginia, be welcoming to business, we have to have good schools, we have to have good roads, and we have to have a good place for these people to come. Um, so Amazon and, play, and people like Facebook want to come to West Virginia too. So we have to build up our communities as well and get rid. Who wants to come to West Virginia if, ever, if people can't pass a drug test? So it all goes into play. So we have to build a West Virginia where people want to come there. They want to live there. We won't have to deal with depopulation anymore. Um, one thing I want to point out about my opponent um, is people keep on saying to me, and my biggest resistance has, be, resistance has been establishment Democrats. Oh, well, you're going to hand it over to the Republicans. Isn't that what a primary is? Joe Manchin's a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. I want to bring democracy back to West Virginia, and I want to bring it uh, back to the Democratic Party, like the miners of Blair Mountain, like Joe Hill, like Mother Jones. Um, we deserve democracy. He's been our Secretary of State. 
He's been our governor. He's been our senator. And we don't have a plan B. We've not had a promise of a plan B. And we're one of the sickest and poorest states in the nation. And people say I'm in inexperienced. Well, he's experienced in taking money from his corporate sp funders. I'm experienced because I've been an activist for my state for years. I've given up my life for my children. We have begged for clean water. We have begged for clean air. And we have begged for prosperity. And nobody knows about West Virginia than the people living up in the hollers that live in unimaginable conditions and we know what we need the most and Joe Manchin has no clue anymore. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had non-millionaires like regular Americans who just care about the community in the Senate? I know it seems like an unimaginable dream, but all you have to do is vote. I mean, volunteering, right. donating is super important so she can have a staff and do all the things she needs to do to win. But make sure you go out there and vote too. They tell you not to vote, but Joe Manchin, uh, he inv was involved in several Democratic primaries in his career. I asked him about that when he was on the show too. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he turned around when he lost one of the primaries and told everybody to vote for the Republican. He did in the 90s. Um, he lost the primary to Charlotte Pritt. And a lot of people ask me if I want to get behind Joe Manchin. Well, we have one of Don Blankenship in the race in West Virginia. Yeah, if you don't know about him, 29 minors died, died and he went to jail. He's still on probation. He's actually here in Los Angeles. I don't know how he's on the Senate ticket on the Republican side for West Virginia. It, it baffles me. But um, I'll be honest, people have asked me if I would get behind Joe Manchin. If Don Blankenship would win the primary, I would pound the streets for Joe Manchin. But people have to also understand too that Joe Manchin is also responsible for those 29 miners dying because he didn't stand up with Ma against Massey and he was taking donations from Massey Energy. I'm the only person on the, in the race that doesn't have the blood of the 29 miners on my hands, except for a man named Bo Copley on the Republican ticket in Logan County and he's a coal miner. Mm -hmm. And that says a lot about our senatorial candidates right now. But I do not have the blood of 29 miners on my hands or in my pocket. There's no, like people think, oh no, a blanket ship can win. No, he can't. You would beat him with a stick. A guy who, who did that to the coal miners in, in West Virginia versus an uncorrupted uh, candidate who's gonna look out for their interests, that's a no brainer. And I'd be really interested to see if you win the primary if Manchin backs you as you've said you'll back him. So. But but we might yeah, never find let, out. I won't back Manchin unless Don Blankenship's on the primary ticket. Now, yeah. somebody in the general on the Mountain Party or the independent ticket goes against Joe Manchin. If I lose the primary, I don't plan on losing. But if I lose the primary and somebody, you know, if, if somebody is viable on the ticket, it might be me. I don't know yet. Then I'll get behind them because I have a hard time getting behind Joe Manchin because, like I said, he has just as much blood on his hands as. Don Blankenship because he did not stand up for those coal miners. He should have been a voice for the coal miners before re-election. All right, Paul Jean Swearingen, as you can tell, strong, progressive, uncorrupted. So check out the links below. See if you'd like to help by volunteering, donating, uh, somehow get involved, fight for justice. So uh, thank you, Paul Jean. Great thank to you. have you here.